Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guiding Q. And in this video, we're gonna talk all about configuring aggregations based on relationships. Stay tuned. In the previous video, in the first video I did on aggregations, I talked about the why and the how. Why should you use aggregations and how do you create the aggregations? If you haven't watched that video, and you don't know much about aggregation, you should take some time to go watch that video. I'm not gonna wait, just press pause and come back. The next thing, aggregations do not require premium capacity. I'm gonna say it again. They do not require premium capacity. You can use them if you have pro licenses, okay? All right, and the last thing, and I forgot to mention this in the, the first video, and Adam sure called it out. He's like, man, you forgot to say this. And I was like, I did. The aggregate tables, they're just import tables, just like any other table in your model, right? You just schedule it and it refreshes. That's all, nothing special about it. Okay, now that I've got all that stuff out of, way, out of the way, you wanna know how to configure these ags, right? So instead of all this talking, you guys know what I like to do, just head over to my laptop. All right, so when I start building a model that I su suspect will need aggregations, when I connect and bring my tables in, every table, I set the storage mode to every table for every table to direct query, right? Because it makes it easy for me to go from direct query to import or from direct query to dual. Once you're in import, you can't switch back. Now you can toggle between direct query and dual, but if I'm in the if my storage mode is import for a table, I can't switch it back to the other storage mode. So I start in direct query because I'm not quite sure what I have. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do, all right? After everything is set in direct query mode, then I find my aggregate table and I switch it to import. I go and find it and I click import. And what you'll see happen is you get a little warning that says, hey, any table that's base, that's related to this ag, we need to switch it to dual mode. And you're probably wondering why? Well, it's really simple actually. So if you take a look at the model that I have, the fact online sales table is in direct query mode and the ags, I just switched it to import mode. But this dim date is related to both of them. If I construct an element that builds a query um, that has to hit the fact online sales table, which is in direct query mode, it needs to also be able to access this table dim date in direct query mode because it'll construct, let's say I'm using SQL Server, it'll construct that T-SQL query so it'll push it back to the source and run that query against both of those. If it's an import mode, it can't do it, okay? now. If I construct a visual that creates a query that's gonna run against my backend cache model, right? It's gonna go through the, ag the ags table and hit dim date. It also needs to be able to construct a DAX query that can run against that backend model in cache mode. So that's why it's switching dim date to dual so it can run as a direct query if it needed to, or it can run in cache mode if it needed to. I hope that makes sense. If you don't, if it doesn't, post a question down below, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and say, yep, this is what I want, click okay. And what you're gonna see, a little dialog window will pop up and it's doing some stuff to both of those tables. It's importing um, so it can cache data from both of those tables. So just take a, it'll just take a second here. Boom, done, all right? So if I click this table, you can see the storage mode is import. And if I click this table, you can see it's dual. In fact, online sales is still direct query, okay? Then I begin the configuration. So I'm gonna click on the little ellipsis on my ag table and say manage aggregation. So it's gonna pop up the manage aggregations window and now I begin to configure my ag. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna say sum, I'm mapping my aggregation column to my detail table, right? And my detail table is online sales, and I'm gonna go find my sales amount. Bam, right? And then I'm gonna switch over to my sales quantity, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing and map it to my sales quantity column, all right? And now I just wanna do a count rows. So I'm gonna say count rows table, fact online sales, and that's just it. Now. I have an option here for the date key. Now my table, my ag is related to date, um, but I have an option where I can specify a group by clause. I don't need it if a relationship is specified, okay? I don't need to use that group by. We'll talk about group by in the upcoming videos, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and click apply all. And what you'll see happen is, right, it's gonna hide that aggregate table. And I, this is a great, the great part about this feature is if I've already built a report that's relying on that fact table, right, where I've done the mappings, I don't even have to change it. I don't have to change anything about my report because Power BI is so smart that it's gonna say, hey, 
I don't need to go direct query. I can hit the cache and use the aggregation table. It's so smart. I don't have to change anything about my report. So I switch over to my report that I already created. Take a look at these numbers, right? If you look at these numbers, these were the numbers that I ran while everything was in direct query. Now, all I did was add a simple aggregation table and I'm just using columns from the date table. And that's what's great about basing your aggregations on a relationship. Any column in your lookup table, any column that that aggregate is related to can be used in elements in the visuals on your report and it'll totally hit the ad. So let me show you, right? So we'll keep this here just for a baseline. And just to be fair, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna open up DAX Studio. It's just so you guys can see, I'm connected to this model. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the cache. Just to be fair, I've cleared the cache. I'm gonna start recording. Remember these numbers and I'm gonna say refresh visuals. So I'm gonna refresh my visuals. What? Just a quick comparison, total sales, 45 seconds, total sales, not even a second. And it's going to the cache, it's hitting the aggregation. How do you know it's hitting the aggregation? Well, you gotta stay tuned to this series because I'm gonna show you how you can check to see if it's hitting aggregations using a couple of tools coming up. All right, what do you guys think? You got any questions, comments, are you using ags today? Let's continue the conversation where? In the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the guy in the Q channel, hit that subscribe button. You like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.